Now guys, if you are wondering that what are the options after a visa refusal for Canada, then this video is going to talk all about reconsideration, reapplication or probably an appeal when it comes to visa refusals, be it study, work or visitor or any other visa refusal with regards to Canada. It could be a PR visa refusal, a permanent residency uh, application refusal or any other application which could have been refused in the past. We will in this video talk about visa refusals broadly at large and tell you what could be your next steps. Depending upon a situation, you could either go for a reconsideration or a reapplication. And then obviously there is an appeal that is always there at the back end. Please be tuned till the end. My name is Sahil. Guys, welcome back once again. My name is Sahil and I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I practice in Ontario. My office is here. If you have to get in touch with me, my number is on the screen and the details are there in the description box. More than happy to connect with you. Before we proceed any further, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because we talk a lot about Canadian immigration. And if you are an aspirant of coming to Canada, then this is a channel that you must be subscribed to all the time. So guys, a lot of people talk to me about visa refusal. Some people have already received a particular visa refusal or some people want to know what could be the option just in case if a particular visa gets refused. We could be talking about a visitor refusal, a study permit, a work permit or any other permanent residency application, maybe a family reunification or any other application. In all the events, it is still a visa refusal, right? So. First things first, like the first step after a particular visa refusal immediately to be done within the next 24 hours should be going for your GCMS notes. Now quickly explaining what exactly are the GCMS notes. It's basically whenever an officer, an immigration officer gives a particular visa refusal, the applicant is usually served with a refusal letter. Now, if you go through the refusal letter properly, there are particular reasons that are mentioned. It is not exactly a proper reason, but it is the clause and the category of the clause or the category of the refusal that the officer thought would be the most appropriate. But what the officer does at the back end is the officer has a particular CRM system, which is basically called the global case management system under which it the officer would enter the actual reasons or the analysis which led to that refusal right now the officer cannot send these personalized letters to everybody so instead they usually mention the clause or the ERPA, the act or the IRPR the, the regulation which was uh, you know considered when the application was being refused and then also a broad category of what the officer would think now, if you talk about or if you go and discuss this in forums, you would literally realize that most of the people get the similar kind of refusal reasons. It is not the case when you go ahead and apply for your GCMS notes or the ATIP notes, then you get to know the actual reason. So the first step after getting a visa refusal is to apply for those GCMS slash ATIP notes. It's access to information and privacy. That's the, you know, that's the category that you apply under and the notes are ordered and the notes that you get are a record of that GCMS system, right? Once you get those notes, they're usually very long. So probably around 30 to 80 pages, something like that. And then the notes will tell you everything of which office did the file go to. What were the processes that were con uh, you know conducted? Which all security checks were passed? What were the inadmissibilities, if any, were given to the applicant? And then the proper analysis or the notes of the officer when the officer was actually refusing the file. Now, after you get those notes, you usually have probably three options, you know, going forward. But even before you go for the notes do uh, follow a strict timeline because an appeal if a person has to go for an appeal there is a strict timeline that has to be followed right so i during the you know the other end of this video i will explain what are the possible options which so please be sure to you know understand reconsideration reapplication and the federal court appeal right so all of three are very important because gcms notes can take up to 30 or maybe more than 30 right so it's normally around 30 is something that they are taking they uh, you know the ircc would tell you once you apply for gcms notes they will strictly send you an email saying that it's usually 30 days or more and they nowadays they are taking more than 45 60 days as well right so depending upon um, how soon you get the notes you might have to start planning in parallel because if you wait for 60 days or probably 45 days and then think of you know taking the steps further it might be too late right so do speak to a proper professional and then get your options open three options reconsideration 
uh, reapplication or an appeal. I'll explain all three in detail and then you can choose whatever suits the best. Now guys, reconsideration and an appeal are only done if you have full faith in your application. If you think that the application you submitted was great, uh, if none of the documents were missing, you had provided all the forms and filled all the information correctly, then you want to reopen or appeal the existing file. So that's either going for a reconsideration or an appeal. If you think you missed any document, if you want to choose another category, if you want to probably change a college or anything, then you go for a reapplication. Okay, I'll explain all three. Now reconsideration is done usually through a web form right it is the most inexpensive process and it is obviously inexpensive inexpensive when compared to an appeal and also it can there is no minimum maximum deadline to it but you should do it quickly if you have received the gcms notes and then you know what is the kind of you know so say for example uh, you had applied a particular visa and the officer did explain a bit in the refusal letter. Now you know that probably uh, the officer erred in uh, the application of law or if uh, the officer noted a particular error in fact or error in law, then you might want to go back to the officer and then say that, okay, you know, there is a reconsideration request. We believe that the officer, you know, committed an error in fact or in law and then please take the supplementary information and reconsider. In that particular situation, the IRCC will reopen the file and give you a decision con in, or probably they will confirm the decision. So they could either go ahead and approve the application or give you a confirmation that no, this decision remains as is and the file remains refused, right? So that is a reconsideration. I'll give you an example. So very recently a case came by when the person had applied for a post-graduation work permit. And then uh, the officer actually committed an error saying that, you know, the student actually studied online in India and then came here. Uh, this was a public policy that was active during COVID-19. Now what the officer did, the officer actually did not notice or probably did not take care of the policy. He probably would have gotten confused with the dates or something and sent a refusal to the applicant. So we went ahead and submitted a reconsideration request saying that the timelines were perfectly in sync with the public policy and hence there was an error in fact or the error in law. Therefore the officer reconsidered the file and sent an approval and sent the work permit. Similar would be a case and we are very recently doing one more as well where uh, the officer is, you know, we are submitting that case. Let's hope, you know, it goes well, but the there is an error in terms of particular law application. There is a policy that we are believing that the officer would not have considered. Let's hope it goes well, but that particular application will go under reconsideration. No extra fees, no application fees again, no separate documentation, but a simple letter it's not exactly simple but a letter a detailed letter with a lot of case laws case references precedents and everything that will explain that similar was a situation in a particular case and hence the file should be reconsidered because it deserves an approval the other thing would be so say for example a reconsideration is done at an IRCC level only once you think that a reconsideration has already failed right so say for for example you submitted a request for reconsideration and the officer said no, uh, the decision stays as is, we are considering as a, it as a refusal only. Then you want to go ahead and file for an appeal because what happens is an appeal goes to the federal court. It's a written appeal, it's a request to uh, leave where we say that uh, the federal court should consider the written material that we are submitting with regard to the application and then the federal court or the judge will consider the appeal will look at the merits of the case the judge will analyze the case and give his or her own uh, you know verdict and then the if the leave is allowed or if the appeal is allowed the uh, IRCC department, the Department of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship will be uh, requested to reopen the file and then follow whatever directions the judge has issued and then the decision would be rendered again. So this is called an appeal. Since a person is usually a foreign national in this case, the appeal is always done in a written format. The person does not have a hearing or anything attached to an appeal. It is done through a Canadian lawyer only. So. No lawyer from outside Canada, no consultant, no agent whatsoever can do an appeal. Reconsideration, a Canadian immigration professional like an RCIC or a lawyer or a paralegal in Ontario or probably the applicant himself or herself. 
these are the four kind of people who can submit the reconsideration appeal has to be done only by a lawyer right because it goes to the federal court it's a proper application if you think an appeal is your way couple couple of things to remember uh, it goes to the federal court second it can get expensive depending upon how complex is the case uh, a lawyer might want to charge you more or less depending upon how complex the situation is right um, there is no such success rate attached to either an appeal or a reconsideration because a success rate is usually attached to whether the documents you correct you submitted were correct or not uh, whether you have a case or there is merit to your case you know if you are trying to prove that there is an error in fact or error in law there should be merit so you should be correct factually and legally only then it's successful so no such success rates can be attached to either of these applications but like i said uh, if you want to go for reconsideration that's separate if you want to go for an appeal if you think the reconsideration has failed go for an appeal if you still think there is merit to the case right if these two are all kept on side the third is usually a reapplication i'll tell you where reapplication is usually uh, considered say for example a person applied and the person believes that he or she had a very bad case or probably a very weak case um the person did not have probably ties back home or uh, you know applied for a college with low ielts score or whatever right random situations where the person thinks that okay um you know instead of going after the immigration officer i personally think that my case was only bad i could have changed a particular thing for example a person might have done btech in india wanted to go for an mba and the officer said that the course is in law is not in line with the previous education and employment history right in that case you might want to reconsider opting for another case so that clearly calls for reapplication whenever you go for a reapplication everything is done fresh uh, the fees is submitted fresh the application documents are submitted fresh it's a whole new case altogether one it can get a little bit expensive because the gcms notes the officers reasons have to be addressed in that reapplication right so it is not just an application by itself you have to address the flaws in the previous application as well so a lot of precedents case laws and then situations and everything has to be addressed properly ties back home everything has to be addressed properly and then you go for a reapplication you should always try and take care of the officers concerns which were noted in the gcms notes for example if the officer said that the ielts score is low or probably say uh, the officer said that the chose the choice of course is bad or if the officer says that there was not enough money with the applicants you know savings you have to address those first and then go for a reapplication there is no timeline no deadline whatsoever you can go ahead and reapply probably in the next intake or next month or probably take your own sweet time to fix all the issues that the officer noted in the gcms notes well all in all a visa refusal is never a dead end to the situation we have handled a lot of visa refusal cases i am you know i normally specialize in uh, refused cases but the point is that lot of people are able to turn around the decision and you know uh, whenever a visa is refused there is no guarantee of success whatsoever because uh, for once the officer did note the merits in the case and the officer was not comfortable in giving you the visa we as professionals or anybody as a professional would try his or her best to submit you know a, an addressal to the concern of the officer and you know try to submit supporting documents but you know at the end of the day the decision remains in the immigration officer's hands nobody can affect the decision we can only put up the file on a best effort basis guys um, these are your options or options for anybody who has received a visa refusal from canada for beat um, a visitor visa a study a work or any other permanent residency application these are the normal options once a visa is refused you have to note whether uh, you are out of status in status that also plays a very important role you might have to go for a trp you might have to look at your situation if you are inside canada or outside canada those things are also supposed to be noted because they really hold an important uh, place in your application 
sometimes a person is refused sometimes a person has refi- received an inad- inadmissibility also uh, we could probably submit a reconsideration get it overturned or probably submit an appeal or go the other way you know there could be an arc authorization to return to canada lot of things are there you know lot of technicalities and legalities are involved so always reach out to a professional to see what has happened in your case and if there is an appropriate fix or a solution whether you are inside canada or outside canada always try to get you know the best solution to your situation guys i hope the video was helpful gave you much insights into what are one's options if a visa is refused if you still have any questions please feel free to schedule a consultation with me i would be more than happy to speak with you once again my name is sahil and i practice in ontario looking forward to speaking with you very very soon and i really look forward to seeing you soon in canada all the best